Hey guys, here we go into uh, a film study on J-Rock's performance uh, against Jared Hurd. And it was a fantastic performance. I thought that he dominated the fight. And actually, um, I thought that he was going to win this fight anyway. Uh, but I didn't realize it was going to be like by such a landslide. You know, I've actually become quite a big fan of Jared Hurd. I think that he's actually a pretty good fighter. Um, you know, maybe he needs to move up in weight and kind of stop cutting so much weight. He's a big guy. You know, maybe being drained isn't isn't best for him. I'm not sure how he feels in the fights. I don't know. But he does look a little bit sluggish, you know, sometimes. A little slow, I'll say. Maybe that's just for the, the weight class. But, um... He didn't look slow in the Lara fight, though, so, you know, kind of some contrasting ideas there. But, um, anyway, let's go ahead and get into the boxing and kind of talk about um, J-Rock's fantastic performance. Um, so, first off, you notice right away um, J-Rock's lead hand, and it's up, right? The round is just starting, and he's already looking to control the space between him and Jared Hurd. Now... The most important part about this, right, and I talk about it in Active Guard, and I've been shortcutting a lot of my videos. You know, I think my, my videos are more for fighters than they are for, like, fanboys and, and boxing fans. Um, but, but the reason that he's doing this is to control the space between him and his opponent. Now, a lot of people think that, that you need to control the distance, right? It's not the distance. How close you are to your opponent doesn't matter until you're like bodied up with them until you're too close to see punches coming right but you want to control the space between them because that that space between you is going to be contested with punches and the person who has the control of that space is the one that's allowed to freely move in and out of it it's like contested waters in a battlefield right or a contested road um for like traveling resources or you know i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about but but it's the idea that that you both need that space to work. You need that space to feint. You need that space to get your opponent out of position. And that's the whole point of a feint or a probe uh, is to get your opponent out of position. So what J-Rock does here by using his very dominant style of lead hand dominance, right? A very dominant style of, of controlling the space. He's trying to stop Jarrett Hurd from entering that zone unless he's going to throw a punch because it makes it very difficult for you to think that you're going to faint around his his shots because you might just walk into one. You don't know what he's setting you up for because on top of the idea that he's controlling the space, he's still getting a look at you. He's still getting to read you and the moves that you make. And it just makes it very, very difficult for you to set your own punches up when you're not comfortable stepping into that zone. So J-Rock immediately controlling the space with his lead hand as you see controlling it going forward and Jared Hurd does the right thing here see how he touches gloves with Jared Hurd or with with J-Rock he says okay I, I've seen this done in the southpaw he did a great job against Lara and that's where that that idea is much more common fighters are much more comfortable doing this against southpaws than they are against conventional fighters because of the fact that when you stick your lead hand out you feel exposed to the right hand but if you're not committing your body weight you're not actually committing anything to it so you still have all of the applicable um, counters to a right hand so slipping to the outside or slipping to the, I mean to the inside you don't usually want to slip to the to the inside or you don't really usually want to slip to the outside of a right hand um, you want to slip to the inside of your opponent and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute but you have all these tools available to you still and you still have your right hand counter as well you're just kind of probing you're kind of touching your opponent gauging them and the next step here is to figure out who's going to maintain lead hand control and the person who gets to maintain lead hand control is going to be the one that's more able to get their opponent out of position with feints and probes um, and different looks um, and land their offense. And the way that this is figured out is by exactly what J-Rock is going to do here. But notice Jared Hurd gets away from it and J-Rock continues keeping his hand out there. See this jab right here from, J from Jared Hurd? This is not a punch. He's just controlling the space. He's saying, hey, don't come in here. Don't come in here. This is the danger zone. A lot of people call this measuring. That's horseshit. Don't don't listen to that. That they're not measuring. If you're a professional fighter, you've thrown a million punches. You know when you can land. You know where your measurement is. So that's like a, a very very outdated and misused term. But he's just controlling. See how he shot that jab to the glove? You just want to control your opponent's lead hand so that they're not able to set their punches up either. And Jared Hurd knows this. And what happens? 
J-Rock goes in for a punch after. He touches gloves and then feints like he's going to touch gloves again and shoots a, sh shoots, shoots a shot to the body. Now, this is going to be a very common thing for J-Rock as he looks to touch gloves with his opponent, touch gloves, touch gloves, and then when he gets his opponent into that rhythm and comfortable exposing himself in that space, he's going to attack him because he's set a rhythm and now he's changing it. He's changing the pattern on his opponent um, to maintain control of the space between them. And now Jarrett has to say, oh, okay, so he's going to punch me when I attempt to control the space between uh, me and him and contest that space with him. So now it's going to discourage him from wanting to do that. And this right here, this is very Mayweather-like. See how Jared Hurd is kind of on his bicycle thinking? You don't have to give your opponent that time to think. You can throw punches at them. You don't have to think, oh, your opponent is like, oh, they're not ready. This is a battle of wits and wills, and this is a battle of, oh, that's that's crap. You know, you don't, you don't have to wait for your opponent. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to kind of keep that in there. But again, going back to the... The lead hand control, as you notice in this scene, Jared Hurd has his lead hand down now. He doesn't even want to contest it. It's only one minute into the fight. He doesn't even want to contest it. So J-Rock is flaying, fainting his, his, his lead hand. And notice how he faints. He steps forward. And he sees that J-Rock is going to slip to the outside of J-Rock. Jared Hurd is going to slip to the outside, right, and bring his head down. And that exposes his body. So he's able to faint, get Jared out of position because Jared doesn't – he knows that Jared's not looking to counter. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to talk about a little bit about that. He knows that Jared's not looking to counter, by when he faints, Jared doesn't make any countering moves, right? When he eats this shot, he doesn't make any countering moves. He doesn't attempt to throw a punch or, you know, time him or lean forward or, you know. So you can see that the opening shows up here, boom, and he's just able to pick the shot off. And there are a lot of opportunities like this uh, for, J for J Rock throughout the fight um, because Jared Hurd's kind of giving away all the information, right? They say he's a slow starter, you know, but he's not looking to impose anything on his opponent. He's only looking to learn. And, you know, that's kind of how you fall behind in, in point fights anyway. But um, as you can see, he comes in with his lead hand, right? Control, control, shoots a right hand, tries to get him to dip. And because he has control of the space and Jared Hurd is not looking to contest it, right? He's not looking to contest and he's not looking to counter. Jared Rock, Jared, Jesus. <laughs> J Rock is able to do whatever he wants. You know, he can throw these punches. He still has to move off the line and be prepared to uh, to eat a counter attack after his attacks are over. But at the moment, it doesn't look like Hurd is looking to um, to punch with him. Now, again, going back to the controlling style, right? Touch gloves, right? And Jared Hurd says, okay, that's not working. I got to control the space. So he goes to touch gloves again. And when he goes to touch gloves, Williams immediately says, okay, I got him touching gloves with me again. I'm going to fink a touch gloves, right? And I'm going to shoot a right hand to the body. And he says, don't do that. I'm going to I'm gonna keep scoring. And Jared Hurd knows, or uh, J-Rock knows, that all he has to do is score points. You know, he's winning the round. He's outboxing Jared Hurd, even though they're not big, huge, heavy shots. Every time he gets Jared Hurd to contest the space between them, he's able to set up another punch. You know, so he set up a, a jab, he set up a right hand, and now this is great too. Now, in this scene, we have contesting this, the space, and he faints, and he ducks down, and he waits for Jared Hurd to duck the right hand again. Remember this one right here? When he ducks the right hand. So he does the same thing here, but he shoots forward, and you can see him pause and not just shoot the right hand. He repositions himself, waits for Jarrett Hurd to duck uh, away from the right hand so he can come back with it. Now, again, he knows that Jarrett Hurd is not looking to counterpunch with him right now, so he feels safe allowing Jarrett Hurd to transition his weight. And that's what this is supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be a defensive maneuver where he transitions his weight. He kind of gets stuck there because he just bends straight down. He doesn't actually turn his hips, right? But he's allowing his opponent to get a count of, of weight transition um, in between his punch so that he can set him up for that right hand. Just great boxing from Julian Williams. And then again, Jared Hurd touching gloves with him saying, ah, man, I got to control the space. I can't allow him to keep coming in, fainting me, getting me out of position, right? Fainting him, getting him out of position, and landing a right hand. I can't let him keep doing that. J-Rock faints him, and then again goes right for another body attack. 
As soon as Jared Hurd starts to touch gloves again, touches gloves. Jared Hurd goes to touch gloves again, and J-Rock shoots a shot instead, right? Letting him know that if you do that, I'm going to time you, I'm going to catch you. And Jared Hurd hasn't picked up on it yet. He knows that it's happening, but he doesn't know how to counter it yet. He hasn't picked up um, that he needs to be doing basically the exact same thing to be controlling the space. Now, this is a really interesting scene, too, because you see the counterpunch coming. Um, J-Rock does a good job of getting out of the way of the, the actual counterpunch. Um, but you can see that that Jared Hurd is kind of setting him up for it. He's ready for the shot as he's blocking this one. And then he's blocking that one. He's showing that he's ready for it, uh, even though J-Rock does a good job of coming in. You know, it shows that J-Rock, uh, or not J-Rock, uh, that Jared Hurd is, is still active in there and still thinking. So I'm really happy for that. But, um... Good work from from um, J Rock here too. Very interesting in this next clip. We have him coming forward and shooting the jab, and then he's expecting Jarrett Hurd's head to fall in the same line that he was before. Here, where he ducks away from the shot, and then as well here, when the jab comes and he ducks his head away from the shot, expecting the same thing. And shooting his shot there, showing again that he's paying attention to all the things that Jared Hurd is giving him. And then again, controlling the space, controlling the space, and Jared Hurd finally figures it out. He says, okay, I gotta set the same patterns and I gotta start catching him too. But J Rock knows that it's only gonna be usually the lead hand here, and he's able to control him, block the shot, and control him. And now he has control of his head here, and that's gonna block Hurd from being able to transfer his weight into a right hand next if he wants to follow up on this shot so we have j-rock being able to mitigate the damage that herd is able to do uh or to to inflict on him or to even attempt uh by controlling him with the lead hand and controlling his head uh just brilliant boxing so far from from j-rock and then again going in with the same type of of counters touching gloves and then as soon as he looks to touch gloves countering him with the jab just beautiful boxing you guys Again, same thing, right? Every single time Jared Hurd starts to try to control the space. And now look at how tiny Jared Hurd is right now, right? Look at how much, how little space he's taking up, right? Because he's being controlled. He's being boxed into this little space where he's he's desperate not to get hit or or find something. You know, I don't want to say desperate, you know, but he's thinking in there. He's not, there's not a lot of pressure, but there's a lot of mental pressure. He has to think a lot. And then we have J-Rock changing his his attack instead of going straight for the jab which he has been he goes around the guard catches him with the right hand and now this is beautiful for a few reasons because of the fact that jared hurt has been ducking and putting his weight onto his right leg he's going to throw this left hook to keep jared hurt's head up there so that he can land the right hand right it's not even it doesn't even have to be a real punch but he's looking to control jared hurt right hold him there with the left hook and then throw the right hand Beautiful boxing. Let's just watch it one more time. You can see the weight transition, right? Boom. Almost nothing in the left and then all of it in the right. Just great work from J-Rock in this whole fight. And then again, you know, when he doesn't set up his shots, left hook again to hold his head up so he can come with the right hand. And then look at how immediately he moves off the line, you know. Beautiful boxing, and he beats him there, right? And and that's how he can avoid all of the counters when he doesn't set his shots up super well by moving off the line, simply just changing angles, and then now Jared Hurd has to reset. He doesn't have the same opportunity to attack off of those weight transitions and those um, how he exposed himself. And then again, J-Rock coming forward, or Jared Hurd coming forward, and I just wanted to keep this one in there because normally J-Rock is really active with his lead hand, right? So Jared Hurd thinks, oh, nothing's coming. And he's able to explode out of his guard. You know, he's shown his lead hand control and his lead hand dominance over and over again. And it's paid off because he's created a rhythm that his opponent is not expecting. And now he's able to land free punches, right? And that's kind of what you want. You don't, you don't want to have to work all the time to land your punches. You know, you do have to. You know, because the work has already been done. And he's able to catch Jared Hurd really off guard with this shot. 
and then again just moving off the line and then again beautiful so catches him with the shot and you can see Jared Hurd try to come in J-Rock controls him with the lead hand right there and then the next one J-Rock feints him look at this feint J-Rock has to or Jared Hurd ducks the shot right and then Jared Hurd is able to or J-Rock is able to spin him and move him off the line um, and this is the same shot that he thinks he was going to eat that jab right boom and he spins him and I don't know why he doesn't throw the punch right here that would have been a great punch he beats him to the line um, but it would have been a great shot but anyway um, that was the first round that's what I saw a uh, fantastic round from from J-Rock um, yeah anyway let me know what you guys think in the comments below don't forget to like comment and subscribe and let me know if you guys want me to do any more rounds thanks guys